This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and today we're going to repair, or hopefully repair, a Newcomb model RT-12CP classroom record player. I think this is from 1979. The motor is date-coded late 1978. It's a nice-looking little unit, and when we turn it on, as you can see, nothing happens. No power light, no motor rotation, no noise from the speaker, or anything. And as you can see, not much to it. A little solid state amp board the in the mm -hmm. turntable motor. This is one of those that has a a secondary winding on the on the motor winding to provide a low AC voltage to the amplifier board, and then that voltage is bridge rectified and filtered for the necessary DC voltage. And then we have this fuse here, which we're about to check. It could very well be blown. There's really not a whole lot that can cause one of these not to power on. Alright. Continuity buzzer is working. Yes, we have a blown fuse. And the label looks like one quarter amp fuse. And this looks like a slow blow type. Now, when a fuse blows in a piece of equipment, then something generally caused it to blow, even if it was an outside source, such as a lightning strike or power surge or something like that, but fuses generally don't blow on their own. So when you find a blown fuse, you need to investigate why. You don't need to just slap in a new fuse and see what happens. Or do what some geniuses do, put a fuse in that's about 30 times too big for the circuit or they'll wrap the old fuse in aluminum foil well, you're defeating your protection doing that and if there's something shorted on the chassis then you're going to cause a lot of damage I never will forget the time when I was a kid some guy brought me a TV for repair and when I opened the back the fuse had been jumpered with aluminum foil and of course it caused a whole lot more damage than what it would have caused it had he just left it alone well I confronted him with it and he just couldn't understand how that happened because that TV he bought it brand new and that TV had never been opened up and I said well I doubt it came from the factory that way I think what it is people just don't want to own up to the fact that they screwed up their equipment well when you when you don't know what you're doing you need to just leave it alone and and find somebody who does know what they're doing instead of trying to save a dollar because usually when you try to save a dollar you end up spending more money in the long run now let's check across the filter capacitor coming off of the B plus line and as you can tell we have a dead short across the filter capacitor that can be caused by a shorted capacitor itself or shorted output transistors, or shorted power supply diodes. It's not likely that the capacitor is shorted, but it can happen. I remember years ago a local church gave me a mid-80s 25-inch Zenith TV. It was one of those big table model sets in the rectangular wooden box like you used to see in schools. And the set would power up, but it was struggling. It, it, you just had a roar in the audio, very little high voltage, and that was about it. No, no picture, no, nothing else. All the power supply voltages checked very low, and I was pulling my hair out trying to find out the cause. I knew something was loading it down. Well, I unplugged the, one of the voltage inputs to the tuner module, and the rest of the chassis came to life. So I said, well, that's where the short is traced it down and there was a shorted electrolytic capacitor inside the tuner module. I think it was either a 1000 microfarad or 2200 microfarad at 16 volts, but it was it was one of the smoothing filters in the in the B plus line to the tuner module. Replace that one capacitor and the TV worked perfect. So yes, electrolytic capacitors can dead short and that particular one showed dead shorted on an ohm meter. It's funny that I should bring up the Zenith TV with a shorted electrolytic capacitor 
Looks like this one has a shorted electrolytic capacitor too. I have it disconnected from the circuit, touching one of the leads, and look at there. Dead short. Just so you won't think I'm pulling your leg, there it is. As you can see, dead shorted. Okay, this is a 1000 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor, and looks like a match Houston cap. Sure, we have something in our inventory that'll work. There's the new capacitor installed. I had to install it on the bottom side of the board because this is a radial lead style capacitor. The old capacitor was an axle lead, and had I installed it on the top side of the board, the capacitor would have been too tall to, to fit. So I just installed it this way, and there's still plenty enough clearance. And as you can tell, there's no there's no uh, there's no short now. So I think we can put a fuse in and give it the smoke test. Okay, let's see if it works or blows up now. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's see what happens. need to be clean and I don't think this cartridge is in the best shape but it's no surprise these 89T cartridges are always bad. Now this will eventually get replaced with a P226 cartridge just like I did with the Audiotronics a few videos back and you know I'll take the drive mechanism apart and clean it and lubricate it and all that but there's no need in me showing you all that again. You've seen me do it a million times in other videos, but yep, for those who think that low voltage electrolytic capacitors can't short, I just proved you wrong. Alright, thanks for watching and hope you got something out of this and more to come later.